Because opera is often co-produced across countries in different cities um, uh, around the world, you know, you'll have something that's made for Barcelona, then it comes to London, then it goes to, to, to uh, Sydney, then it goes to Seattle. Um, you're talking about a, a, a production, a concept that's then applied to lots of different places in the world. Um, that presumably is a, a huge challenge because all audiences are, are different yeah. and their reference points are different. And I think especially in comedy, um, I often say, you know, doing a co-production with Barcelona, what makes them laugh on the Ramble is not necessarily what makes them laugh at the Welsh Valleys. So I think you need to be very careful on international co-production uh, with comedy. But in general, yeah, you need to understand your audience. Um, I mean, I, I like co-producing, and I've done a lot of it, um, and I've tended to try and find partners who, who share the artistic approach which I want whatever company it is to, uh, the direction I want that company to take. Um, but you do need to be mindful of your own audience. You know, theatre is a bit like a language. Um, that the style of theatre, what, what one audience in one country are used to, is not necessarily... Uh, what another one is used to. So here, here's a little interesting exercise for you. you you've, you've recently worked, well, your recent career has taken you from New Zealand, uh, where you were the, 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 the director of opera at New Zealand Opera, uh, then to Seattle, to Seattle Opera, and now to, to Welsh National Opera. So three really quite disparate oh. geographical areas. Um, how would you characterise the audience in each, and how, how did you respond to the audience in each? Yeah, um, so I would say in New Zealand, I think because of the relatively small amount of work uh, generated there, uh, plus a really sort of open attitude to trying, th trying something, uh, the New Zealand audience is incredibly open and up for it, even if they don't like it. They'll sort of say, good on you, mate, for, for doing it. You know, it, and that was very refreshing, coming... Uh, you know, I went to New Zealand um, in 2006, where I think there were, you know, there were there were rumblings in opera audiences in the in, in the early noughties. That there was a bit of a pushback against a more conceptualised approach. I think it was a we were beginning to see, feel it then, um, and it was refreshing actually to go to New Zealand for eight years and find um, um, pleasure in that. Uh, I, we actually took Chris Alden's Turandot from Welsh National Opera. And uh, which was always you know, somewhat contentious. It was by no means, a, uh, you know, it's, it was Chris Alden production. It was, it was abstracted. It was very hard hitting. And it wasn't the easy fairy tale that people expected. And um, it was a rave hit in New Zealand. Chris said, you have got me the best ever reviews I've ever had in my life. He almost didn't want them to be so good because it, but they just got it uh, in a way that British audience struggled. America is different. Um, I was in Seattle. Seattle is a very progressive city, um, but I don't think its opera audience were as aware of the conceptual element to opera as I think they thought they were. So, you know, I, undoubtedly, when I took the Peter Convicini Traviata from E&O, this um, upset an awful lot of our old audience members, but actually had a fantastic effect on, on new uh, and, and a younger audience. Um, so, so maybe on the one hand it was a tactical error, but actually we did it deliberately to make a stand. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't just to show an out, you know, a, a more um, advanced way of looking at Traviata, a non-crinoline Traviata. It was a conscious decision to um, to, to put Seattle Opera within the bars and the, and the conversation of the city as a whole. So we knew we were going to upset some people, but we did it deliberately. I say not to give them a, you know, a right of spring walking out feel, but to make them think that Traviata doesn't have to always be set in, 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 in 1850 with, with large crinolines, because that way today, for an audience who, who really don't understand um, you know, what the 19th century French society was like, um, and therefore sit behind a costume, you know, a costume piece, uh, we felt they were missing the point of, that Verdi is making that piece. So it was a conscious decision, but it, of course it upsets people at the same time. And I think that's the attitude. You, you have to think about your audience, think where they are, um, find a production which, um, if, it's, if it's coming from overseas, um, where your best judgment is it's going to make you know strike a chord to resonate with the audience 
Um, so you've been very diplomatic. You've told us about the New Zealand audience and the and the audience in Seattle in America, uh, but not about oh the yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, what's fascinating about WNO as a touring company is um, what is the WNO audience? Is it Cardiff? Is it Oxford? Is it Liverpool? And it's all of them, and they are very different. Um, and that is a challenge because you know, in Seattle we did we we transformed the average age of the audience, which plummeted down because of the program we were doing. Um, you can't do that anywhere near so easily when you're dealing with nine different cities. Um, and I think what our approach is dependent on our hubs. We actually operate in Birmingham, in North Wales, in Llandudno and Southampton and now Plymouth. We operate hubs first and foremost for our community work. But we're now looking at a new pro, um, programme which um, enhances that work, including creating pieces. And the idea is to make work which belongs to each of those communities and not try and play the same piece in each city. Now, I'm not talking about a main stage work, but sort of mid-scale work and, and um, devised work and participatory work. So that the issues in, in North Wales, and we're looking now to Cornwall as well for the first time, uh, you know, Cornwall or, or North Wales are going to be very different from the West Midlands and not try and make one size fits all.